بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الخبير اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد ومن تبع بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله All praise and thanks is for Allah, the Lord of everything. And I ask Allah, the Most High, to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasalam, and whoever follows Muhammad in good deeds until the day of judgment. Now, we're continuing in our book called the gateway of understanding the three fundamental principles. Now, there are three matters that a Muslim should understand in his religion. And this is related to Tawheed. Tawheed is divided into three categories. The first category is Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, the oneness of your Lord. That means that you should worship Allah knowing that He is the one that created you. Allah has said in His book, خَالِقَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ اللَّهُ خَالِقَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَكِيلٍ Allah has created everything. The other Tawheed is Tawheed Asma wa Sifat, which is the oneness of attributes of Allah, names and attributes of Allah. This means that Allah has told us information about Himself, whether the names or words that describe His action. And through this Tawheed, Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat, or the oneness of the names and attributes of Allah, we should believe sincerely that He is the one and the only one attributed with these names. For example, one of the names of Allah is Al Khaliq, the Creator, and so forth. The other Tawheed is Tawheed Al Uluhiyya. This is sincerely worshipping Allah as the true and the only God. So let's go again. Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, the oneness of Lordship. Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat, which is the oneness of it in Allah's name and His attributes. And the third is Tawheed al the sincerity of worshipping your Lord in oneness as, and truth as the only Lord. Sorry, the only God. Yes. And the other thing that we should be careful of and keep foremost in our minds is that we should disassociate all, disassociate ourselves from Ahlul Shirk, the people that commit poly polytheist. And now we can derive this evidence of disassociating ourselves from these people, even though they are or they could be our friends or our family through the saying of Ibrahim which is in the Quran Ibrahim may Allah send peace and blessings upon him said when he was when Abraham was said to his father and his people indeed I am disassociated from that which you worship meaning the things that you worship with Allah I'm far from it from you I do not worship Allah with these things. You have your religion and I have mine. That's what's meant. And through this, one must have clear in their mind that they should keep away from the disbelievers in any aspect that relates to their religious beliefs. So, they should not celebrate their so-called festivals or celebrations or any form of known religious aspect that they have. We should keep far from them. What's meant by Tawheed? 
In the Arabic language, Tawheed means to single out or to make one. In our overwhelming religion of Islam, it means to single out Allah in all acts of worship, all acts of names and attributes, and all acts of lordship. Yes. Why should we study Tawheed? One of the reasons, or the first reason is, it is the religion of the followers of Abraham. May peace and blessing be upon Abraham. The second is, that it's a compound, it's a compound, it's a, it's a commandment for all creation to worship their Lord in oneness and in truth. It is the greatest commandment of Allah. Another, if we do not study Tawheed and understand it, we will fall into shirk, which is polytheism. There is nothing beneficial more than having Tawheed in one's heart and worshipping Allah through guidance of this Tawheed. Now, all the messengers were sent to their people for a specific reason, which, which was to worship Allah in oneness and in truth. Another reason why we should study Tawheed is that it removes all the fear and all the cowardness that one will have in his heart. Another reason is that no action is accepted unless you have Tawheed and then following the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Yes. And so forth. Now, let's move on. What are the three principles that was shown in the three fundamental principles of the book? The first is, the first principle is, the author included the following topics in the section of his treatise. To know and be aware of Allah. To know who your Lord is. To know how to come to worship your Lord more and more according to the correct knowledge. To be aware of the existence of your Lord, Allah Azawajal, with its proofs. Having this proof, you will have tangible evidence of the existence of your Lord. Your Lord is the one that should be singled out in all forms of worship. The other thing is the types of worship that the Muslims should engage in throughout his lifestyle. And also, the ruling given to someone who directs any form of this acts of worship to other than Allah, the Most High, and so forth. The second principle relates to the following, which is the explanation of the religion. Telling us what's meant by Islam, giving us the full levels of Islam, giving us the pillars of Islam, giving us the meaning of the Shahada, the testimony of La ilaha illallah wa ashadu an Muhammad al Rasulullah, the pillars of Iman, the branches of Iman, and the meaning of Ihsan. Now this, these are the things that were covered within the second principle of knowing your religion. Now remember, when you go into the grave, the three questions that you will be asked is, one, who is your Lord? Second, what's your religion? And the third, who is your prophet? Now keep in mind the three questions. Now let's move on to the third principle, which is related to Prophet Muhammad Now the third principle of the book entails knowing Prophet Muhammad knowing his lineage, knowing his date of birth, knowing his time of death. May peace and blessing be upon Prophet Muhammad 
knowing the revelation, knowing the place that verses were revealed, and so forth. Knowing what was the mission of Prophet Muhammad knowing the duration of Prophet Muhammad teachings, knowing of the journey of Prophet Muhammad from Jerusalem to the heavens, knowing the obligation of these priors, knowing the hijrah of Prophet Muhammad from Mecca to Medina, knowing the duration of the preaching and then his death, knowing the, the, the completion of the religion, and so forth. Other benefits of the book that we have covered would or has included the resurrection after death, the account and the recompense of one's action, the mission and the call of all messengers, the meaning of testimony, which is a tawheed, and the pillars of the tawheed, which is rejecting all false deity and having sincere iman in Allah as the wajal. Now what are the types of jihad? Now jihad means to fight in the sake of Allah. Now what meant by this? It means basically making Allah's religion the highest and making the statements of the belief, disbelief in the lowest level ever. That's jihad. Now let's go to the different types of jihad. We have the first type which is against oneself. By the guidance found in a Surah Al-Asr. Secondly, the knowledge, having knowledge of your religion, then righteous action, calling people to it and being patient. And the other type of jihad is against shaitan, which means you fight your desires to keep on the straight path. You go, you fight the major sins that you may be pushed to do from your own desires and so forth, and even minor sins which your own selfish needs would incline you to do. And the third part of the third jihad is against the disbeliever. So we have three. Jihad against oneself, jihad against the shaitan, the evil doer, and jihad against the disbelievers, and so forth. And I think we'll stop here for tonight. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa man tabi'u ahsan ila yawm al-deen Please tune in for our next lesson regarding the book of understanding the gateway of the three fundamental principles. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.